Are you one of the millions of people around the world that has still not gotten the COVID-19 vaccine, but are at least open to the idea and perhaps taking more of a wait-and-see approach because you're concerned about some of the serious side effects you've heard about? Well, if you are, I want to take just a few minutes of your time and explain why I think it's better to get the vaccine than to get COVID. And unfortunately, we're at a point in time, thanks to the highly contagious Delta variant circulating around the world, that you're probably either going to get COVID or you're going to get the vaccine. There's really no in-between anymore. So let me explain the difference between the risks of the vaccine and unfortunately the risks of COVID. All right, let's get started. Everything we do in life is full of risks and benefits. I use the silly example with my patients that there's a risk of taking a drink of water. We turn on the tap and take a drink without even thinking about it, but there's risks associated with that. We expect the water to be clean, not have any pollutants, not any contaminants, not have anything that's not supposed to be in there. We assume that the guy down at the water treatment plant has done his job, but we don't know that for sure. We're taking a little bit of a calculated risk because we're thirsty and we know our body needs water. So we're going to go ahead and take that risk, take that drink, hoping the benefits are worth it. Same thing applies to the COVID-19 vaccine, really. There's risk to taking the vaccine. We know it. Nothing is foolproof. There's never been a pharmaceutical medication or substance designed that doesn't have some sort of risk or serious side effect. However, we have to balance that with the benefits of that substance. So unless you've never taken a single pharmaceutical medication, including anything that's over the counter, never taken a single vaccine, you've experienced those risks and benefits. And I hope you've assumed that the benefit of taking that medication or taking that other vaccine has outweighed those risks. Well, I hope that I can explain why I feel the same way about the COVID-19 vaccine that the risks of taking it are far outweighed by the benefits. And to help explain that, I'm going to compare the risks of the vaccine to the risks of getting COVID, because as I said earlier, there's probably no in-between anymore. You're getting one or the other. So what am I not going to cover here? I'm not going to go over some of the more milder, self-limited side effects that you've heard about. I've made a video about it. I'll link it up above um, where I talked about after getting my second shot and all the side effects that I had, those are well documented. Everybody talks about them, the headaches, the fever, et cetera. That's not what I'm talking about here. Those are just your immune system kicking in and making a response to the vaccine and are actually a good thing in my opinion. What I want to talk about is three of the more severe risks that you probably have heard about. The first one I want to talk about is the risk of getting myocarditis. Now, you may have heard that myocarditis has been associated with the mRNA vaccines, that's Moderna and Pfizer, and it's been shown to be about 1 in 20,000 people. So what that means is for every one person that gets myocarditis, 19,999 people got the vaccine and didn't have a single problem. Compare that to a risk of 1 in 40 people who are going to get myocarditis from COVID. 1 in 20,000 versus 1 in 40. Pretty clear to me who's the winner. I'd much rather take my chances of getting myocarditis, which, by the way, has been shown to be mild and self-limited with the vaccine than I would with getting COVID. Set aside all the other things that come with getting COVID, all the other symptoms and misery and everything that you can potentially get with COVID and just compare the risk of getting myocarditis with the vaccine versus getting myocarditis with COVID itself. All right, so let's move on to the next one, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Guillain-Barre syndrome is a neuromuscular condition that causes temporary paralysis. In some people, it can be fatal, but in most people, they recover without any long-term effects. The risk of getting Guillain-Barre syndrome with the vaccines is approximately 1 in 128,000. So again, one case of Guillain-Barre, 127,999 people get the vaccine without having any problems. Compare that again to the risk of getting Guillain-Barre syndrome with COVID itself. It has been reported to have occurred with getting COVID itself. And it makes sense because there are other viruses 
and frankly other vaccines that have a very rare risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome. The flu vaccine has about a one in a million chance of giving you Guillain-Barre syndrome after getting the flu vaccine. All right, and the last one I wanna cover is the risk of severe blood clots with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Again, very rare incidence, approximately one in 500,000 versus the 16% of individuals who get COVID will have some sort of clotting problem. One in 500,000 versus a 16% chance of getting a blood clot with COVID. To me, the clear winner, and always has been, is vaccines. Every other vaccine that's ever been developed has some sort of serious risk to it. I already mentioned the flu vaccine with a one in a million chance of getting Guillain-Barre syndrome. The measles vaccine has a rare risk of a bleeding disorder. There's another vaccine for infants that we give to protect them against rotavirus that has a rare risk of something called intussusception, which is a gastrointestinal complication. So everything has risks. I use another silly example with my patients that walking out the front door of my office has a risk of getting hit by a bus. I'm not on the bus route, and it's a closed parking lot, but theoretically there's a risk, albeit very, very rare. Everything we do in life is risks and benefits. That's no difference with the COVID-19 vaccine. But I hope that you can see from these numbers that the risk of having one of these severe side effects with the COVID-19 vaccines is much lower than the risk of getting those same complications with COVID-19 itself. And if you can get your mind wrapped around the point that unfortunately, because of how easy and how fast this virus is spreading, that every one of us is eventually either gonna get it or get the vaccine, to me, it's a no brainer to get the vaccine. Now, that may not be the case for you, but I hope you'll at least take what I've had to say to heart contemplate these numbers, continue to talk to trusted advisors. No, that does not mean some random person who made a Facebook post or an Instagram post. Trusted advisors should be people with either a scientific background who have studied viruses or vaccines, or more importantly, your personal physician. It's a little disheartening to me that we have a lot of people who are more trusting of a random person on Facebook than people such as myself who have dedicated their entire lives to studying medicine and preventing and treating diseases. I've now got over 20 years of doing this and I get, I'll admit, a little frustrated when patients come in and try to tell me that they read this or that on Facebook and trust that information of somebody who they've never even met over a person who they come to see to take care of their health. A little frustrating. One of the other issues that I hear brought up a lot is, well, we don't know what the long-term complications of the vaccines are. Well, again, let's take the approach of comparing long-term complications of the vaccine to long-term complications of COVID. From all that we know about the history of vaccines over the last couple hundred years, we know that if there's going to be a serious side effect happen, it's going to happen within the first two months after the person gets the last dose of their vaccine. We now have millions of individuals around the world who have gotten millions and millions and millions of doses of the vaccine. So we have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. And there really aren't any long-term serious side effects expected with these vaccines based on that history. Now one could say that this is a new technology with the mRNA vaccines, but again, New technology has been used throughout the history of developing vaccines, and we've just never seen it. So it's highly unlikely that we're going to see any surprises with these vaccines. Another concern that I hear is, well, why have we seen these rare serious side effects show up when they didn't show up in the original studies? Well, for that, you have to understand how the original studies were designed and how many people were in them. There were 30 to 40,000 people in each of the mRNA studies. And we're talking about conditions that are happening one in 500,000, one in 128,000. We don't have enough people in the studies to catch those rare side effects. But that's common with studies. Studies don't include hundreds of thousands of people. That's why those robust systems put in place to follow up on any of these rare but serious side effects that occur, catch them, deal with them, and determine whether or not 
it's appropriate to continue using that substance, in this case, the COVID-19 vaccines. And each time these have come up, the FDA and other regulatory bodies around the world have continued to conclude that the benefits of the vaccines far outweigh any risks that might happen. Now, let's look at what we know about long-term complications of COVID. We know that COVID has some very serious impacts on the body. It's not just a respiratory disease. It affects every organ system in the body, including the brain, the heart, the kidneys, especially the lungs, and the liver. And we now have a good understanding that about 75% of people who get COVID will have some sort of long-term complication, whether that's fatigue, whether it's cough, brain fog, can't smell, can't taste. So again, if we look at the risk of the vaccine versus the risk of COVID, I'm going with the vaccine every time because there are many more complications, long-term complications of COVID, and we're just scratching the surface of what's to come. We expect we may have an increased risk of congestive heart failure in the future, perhaps an increased risk of kidney disease in the future, liver disease, dementia, all these are being suspected based on what we're seeing already with the aftermath of this virus. So again, pretty easy for me to make that decision of vaccine being much safer than COVID itself. And I hope you'll agree with me on that. So if you're one of those individuals who's been on the fence for a while, I hope this video has helped to reassure you a little bit that while there are some very serious but very rare side effects out there, the risk of eating COVID and the complications and serious side effects that come with it are much more common and much more significant than the vaccine. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a like. Leave me some comments down below and let me know what concerns that I may not have addressed in this video, and I'll be happy to try to address them. And as always, be safe out there.